sure about the existence of God. You're agnostic about it? Yes. Okay. How would you arrive at a conviction and surety? What are the tools that you I don't think I, that I have used? To, I, I, I told the other man, I, I was raised in a Christian uh, house, yeah. by You're Christian right. parents, and I experienced a lot of positive energy, and, positive, and all my friends were Christians, and we learned a lot of positive things. Yeah. So you're a cultural Christian, yeah, cultural Christian, but not, not an yeah. ideological Christian in the sense that believe ideologically in the existence of God. Yeah. Right. Can I ask you a simple the, question? The more secure to, to, and the more firm you are in your belief, the danger arises that you get um, intolerant against other religions. Possibly, but not necessarily. I'll tell you why. I need to be sure that I work for a particular company. I can't just simply be agnostic or do I work or do I need to be convinced because at the end of the day the wages are going to come from my company not from anyone else. Yeah. So I need to be positive and sure and certain about it. I'm not going to turn up to go to work not sure that they're going to get they're going to pay me at the end of the day, am I? So even in mundane affairs of life we take positive stance to be sure about what we do. You can't just simply say oh, is she my wife or not? Oh, I'm not sure about it. You need to be sure who you are having you know intimate relationship with you can't just simply say i don't know it doesn't care it doesn't mind right when it comes to the existence of god this issue can be settled quite easily by critical thinking a lot of people don't use critical thinking and that's why they leave it to speculations and out in the open agnosticism okay if i were to ask you can nothingness which is the absence of everything. Create something? Uh, I just uh, read a book, a science book, uh, I must admit, uh, about the idea of what was before the mm. universe, and there's no way till today, no way knowing it. But it's fine, no way but I'm, to, I'm uh, asking you about concept. If there was nothingness to begin with, can something come, come out of it? Can anything like something come out of nothingness? I don't know. And I don't think anyone knows. We do know, you do know. If I have a wallet and I have no money and I have no friends, I have no banks, can I give you some money? Yeah, that these are things people make, people can see, people can explain. We are rational human beings, we have critical thinking. So let me explore this. I have a wallet, I do have a wallet. If I told you I have no money, Nothing, no pennies, no dollars, no cents, no euros, nothing, no money. I don't have a bank or friends or anyone to borrow money from. Can I give you $20? No, you can't. Because I have no money. Because if I have nothing, I cannot give you something. If there was nothingness, which has no energy, no gravity, no quantum fields, no quantum fluctuations, Nothing, no something, no energy. It cannot bring something into existence. Yeah, the fact one, one, one idea science gives is that there, that there was never a, a point in time where nothing was. That's what you and I would agree. There cannot be a time when there was nothing. There has to be always something. That's right. Now, if there's always something, we are talking about a necessary existence, something that always existed without any beginning. What are the properties, qualities, or attributes of that thing that always existed? What, 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 what is it? I don't know. I don't know. Self-sufficiency. And I like the idea. Self-sufficiency. This thing that always existed must be self-sufficient because there's nothing prior. Independent. Independent, self-sufficient, not needing anyone or anything else for its own existence. Has to be always there, independently, in existence. If such a thing exists independently and has transformed and changed all of this world, then it must possess some energy, power, and it must possess self-awareness. It must possess it, if it doesn't possess self-awareness, how does it transform things? Like anything in the universe that has no functions, anything. To give you, shall I give you an example? Once you go home, you're going to need to eat something, right? If you know you're a tourist, you go to a restaurant. If you're at home in a hotel, you want to eat food from a kitchen. 
all the ingredients are there. There's this fridge, right? There's milk, there's tea, there's pasta, there's bono. All of it is there. You just sit there on the table. Do you think these things will assemble by itself and make good food for you, good dish? Whatever you like, whether you like pasta or pizza or a rice dish. If all the things are there, and there is no conscious, willing agent to assemble all of this together, do you think these things will, the food will be made on your table? Maybe not. But, uh, when you say maybe not, are you saying it possibly maybe? I don't get your point. What I'm saying is, if you have all the ingredients to make a good recipe of food, what, what do you like? Food-wise, doesn't matter. Let, no, what I'm saying is, what the, my point is, if you have all the ingredients together and you did not assemble it with the right ingredients together, put it in a cooker or in the fridge, it will never be made. It will remain in its place. It will never be made. This universe, if we say there is a necessary existence that always existed, if it wasn't self-aware with a will to transform us into what we are, nothing will happen. It has to be, this process happened because of a willing transformation. It's a nice idea, I like it. It's not an idea, it's, yeah, it's something that makes one, sense rationally. One, one, problem, one problem I have with this is uh, that, that there's an existence that decides to make a universe which needs 13.8 billion years to create a Earth, which needs 4 billion years to create a human, which needs 1 million years to be able to think about God. Right. You okay. think, so you think this is a problem? I'll tell you this is not a problem because certain things need to be manufactured and made in a certain way. To give you an example, imagine I want to cook a nice dish, a biryani. Have you heard of biryanis? Uh, you should taste some in biryanis. They need to be slowly cooked to get all the flavor out of it. If you want to just quickly heat it up, you can cook the food. The meat will be cooked, the rice will be cooked and everything, but you would not get the flavor. The earth needs to be conditioned at a certain amount of time to get in this right proportion and so on and so forth. You could just simply make this set like that. So, just because the creator made this universe in a period of time, for the creator, this 13.67 billion years is nothing compared to eternity. Yeah? So, it's, it's nothing. He could have created it just one go, or he could have created it in this way so that it's something conducive for our own existence or our life. So that the sun that is there and the weight will then give us all this energy from the sun to make our conditions worth livable and so on and so forth. So it's not a defect in the work of a creation. Like when an artist paints, he could have just start with a, throw all the paint together and that's it. Or he could have just gradually make the shapes and so on and so forth and put some more of artistic effect and so on and so forth. It's not a defect of a creator or an artist when they do that. So one, what we say critical thinking can lead us to conclusion that there is a being, a necessary existence, with consciousness, with will, with knowledge, with power. It is no, this, you cannot just disagree with it because it's, it's, it's something intellectually and rationally agreeable. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 you have to um, admit that uh, since there is religion, uh, religious people and religious minds try to make this evidence and didn't find a way that uh, the, the common knowledge is okay. We all agree that's right. A priori right. Uh, that's not the case. There's still doubt and it's called belief and not knowledge. Uh, that's probably a difference between many of the belief systems out there compared to Islam. My belief system, Islam as a Muslim, when our faith is grounded on solid foundation. Our concept of God is something that is grounded in such that you cannot just brush it aside because it's not a belief based on blind faith. Many people believe in blind faith like this tree is God, this camera is God, whatever. But what we say, you know the process of how we believe in Islam is a process of elimination and affirmation. So there is nothing worthy of worship. 
this is not God, this is not God, that is not God. You just say no, not worthy of worship, cannot be God. But eventually, you would have to say there has to be something that is always in existence. So that affirmation comes in and this conviction that will give you is not a blind faith. It's a faith based on sound reasoning, on intellectual abilities to convince oneself with proof and evidence. But that's 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 the start. What what our priest said when people from my class came to him and said, I want to be uh, to get my confirmation. Mm. Uh, in fact, you know confirmation and uh, like uh, getting from like uh, I also I can barely hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when, you, when your priest when says now you will grow the baby. This one? This one. This one. You can barely hear them. Oh sorry, sorry. Keep, okay. keep it in the middle. It's just um people need to hear. Okay, there you go. So no, you were saying you're baptized as a baby. For oh, baptism, yes. When you grow up, there's a, there's a second. Mm. Yeah. Um, All right. You become an, uh, in your uh, community. You become an adult and uh, get the. Um, you can decide and um, you're grown, you're grown up. Sure. So you yeah, so there's and a process. And, and, the friend, and the friend said, I want to be, uh, to get my confirmation in the forest, because in the forest I can feel God. Okay. And our priest said, then uh, go to the uh, foster, go to people who were there and get your confirmation from them. Because we are in the church and we have this, uh, what yeah. you said, we have a... Uh, but for us, for us to accept God, you don't need to go through any of this process. You simply believe in your heart, acknowledge it, make a statement with your tongue that yes, there is no God worthy of worship except the one and only God. And Muhammad is the messenger of God okay? and, and servant of God. That confirmation and declaration brings you into the fold of belief in Islam. And then of course you practice manifest with your limbs, your actions, what you now believe. You follow the commands and rules and regulations and prohibitions of our creator. So when I say by critical thinking, it is not just simply blind faith. That process of spe intellectual speculation is just a start to confirm in a process. But when you investigate the revelation, the guidance, the book, the scripture, the Quran, you know about the like the Christians of the Bible? We have the Quran, which we say our creator has sent down as a guidance to people, how they live their life. And it came with its own evidence. Because anyone can bring a book and say it's from God, right? Anyone can bring and say, oh, this book is from God, this book is from God. How can you confirm that this is case or not? The Quran gives two ways of proving it. One is positive evidence, why it's from God. And the other one is giving you opportunity to falsify it. We call them falsification tests. If the Quran wasn't from God, the Quran said, you'd find there in many errors and contradictions and discrepancies. Because that's what we expect. If a book is not from God, it would be full of all these historical errors, scientific errors, errors if it prophesizes something to happen in the future, it would get it wrong. So the Quran offers the opportunity to disprove it like that. And at the same time, it offers you positive evidence why this book cannot be from any other than God. Yeah? So as Muslims, our belief is grounded so that we can be convinced and, and we have tranquility in our heart. Yeah? Otherwise, anyone can believe in anything. So we need to be sure of what we believe. We need to be convinced of what we believe. Otherwise, you know, the whole life will be a life of ups and downs in, in, in your... Suddenly you watch a good movie and you change your belief. And you watch another movie and changes your belief. No, it's not like this. Because if the reality is there is a reason why you're created, you need to know why. So if I were to ask you this necessary existence, why did that necessary existence make you and make me? Must be a reason. Must be a reason. Can we just think of the reason ourselves? Maybe we can, but what if you, you, you think there's a reason and I think there's another reason.
and our reasons are different. So we can't just simply get our minds to work out what the real reason is why we exist. But if it comes from our creator, who tells us, the reason I created you is to be grateful to me, then we can be sure about it. And that's why the Quran tells us exactly why we are created, to worship God. It's not that God needs our worship, we need to worship God because God has given us the faculty of intellect, the choice in which we can demonstrate whether we deserve to go to a place of eternal happiness and joy, tranquility and bliss, heaven, paradise, or we deserve to go to a place of suffering and punishment, hell. We make this choice by believing our, in what our consequence is going to be. God has given us the choice and he doesn't force us to believe in him or anyone else but he tells us what the consequence is going to be and he offers us the evidence that there is he is the one who is God created us he's the one who's given us the guidance and he's the one who created heaven and hell and he's just he's not going to be unjust to anyone and he leaves it to you what do you want do you want a life of happiness in this life and the next or do you want a life of misery you make this choice so as a as intelligent people we should not forfeit and abandon our eternal happiness for the momentary life here and just ignore god and say i'm not going to believe in anything we need to be really scrutinize and reflect and accept this belief by confirming it